hello everybody and today we are going to learn how to create labels in Microsoft Word 2010 using the mail merge feature the first thing you need to do is have a list that contains names I have a list that's called my list and it's on my desktop let's open it up and take a look see what's in there you'll notice in the yellow section now you don't have to have yours in yellow section I'm just got mine in yellow section so that you can easily see the column headers we have salutation first name last name company address one and we have address two in the event that there is like a sweet number or there's a PO box or what have you and then we also have the city state and the zip code these are the fields that are going to show up in Microsoft Word when we're finally building the label okay and I have roughly 26 names in the list so there we are there's our list make sure you save it and put it in a place where it is easily locatable is that even a word I don't know alright let's go to Microsoft Word let's start it up Microsoft Word there you go let's go to mailings first thing you want to do is to create the template for the label that you are creating in my case I went out and purchased Avery 5160 labels I just want simple labels so I'm going to use the 5160 label. I'm going to go here to start mail merge, go down the labels, and choose the 5160 Easy Peel address labels from the list. Make sure that you have Avery US letter in the drop down up here so that you can see what labels are available for this vendor. So for here, 5160, go ahead and click on OK and here is my template it's blank has nothing in it except you can see the grid lines on my screen you may or may not see the grid lines on your screen if you don't just come on over here to layout and make sure that view grid lines is selected here's what it looks like without a selected as you can see the document just looks like a blank document doesn't look like it has any cells or anything in it so make sure that you click on view grid lines to make it easier for you to identify the uh, the cells in the template okay so now we're ready to build the label the first method that we're gonna do is we're gonna use this address block function right here but in order to use that we must tell this template where the list of names are so to do that click on select recipients and we have an existing list it's that spreadsheet that's on the desktop choose it and then go to your desktop and then double click or single click on it and choose open click OK and here you have the template with some next record items in there that really doesn't make any sense all this does is instructs word when it does the merge to advance through the list so that you get different names in each of these labels without this you wouldn't get any you, you would just get the same name in on, you know, on every single label so don't mess with that leave that alone but you'll notice that the address block is now available so go ahead and click on the address block from here over here is a list of uh, templates that you can use to build the label and over here on the right hand side you can see what that template will look like if you recall in my spreadsheet I had a salutation so I want to go down here and choose a template that contains a salutation in it right here mister Josh Randall jr so I go ahead and click on that that's the one I want to use okay then over here I notice a few things one the salutation doesn't show up Two, the the address doesn't show up three the state isn't showing up this is because word was not able to match all of the fields that it needs to build this label to the fields that are in your list so we need to fix this and the way to fix that is to match the fields so go down here to match fields and over here the courtesy title this really is the salutation I'm gonna go ahead and choose SAL and again if you notice let's go down to the next one and fix something here 
Here's address one. When you do the drop down, these are all the fields that are in that spreadsheet that is on the desktop. So these are all those column headers. So address one is down here, so I match that up. Address two, okay, we got the city, but notice the state, Word wasn't able to match anything over there, so you have to match it manually. Go over here, choose ST, and that's it. Now when you choose OK, now your address is built the way you want it. Go ahead and click on OK, and inside this block contains the uh, the name, salutation company, address, and so forth. It's just not expanded. You don't see it expanded, but it's in there. Now the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to highlight everything because I want to change the spacing at least on mine. Control A, right click, go down a paragraph. And I don't want any spacing in my labels. I just want it all single spacing, zero, zero, all that good stuff. Okay? So it just tightens up things a little bit. Especially important if you have multiple lines that are going to show up on your labels. Okay, so we've done that. Now there's one very, very, very important step that we have to take, and that is we need to update the other cells in the template with this address block. Because if you just run the merge by itself right now, you're only going to get one label, and it's going to be the first person in that list. You're not going to get anybody else because none of these other labels tell it to print anything on there. All this next record thing does is just tells Word advance to the next record, but you have to tell that label to print something on it. So we update the labels, and now you see next record and address block. This way, it'll advance to the next record in the list, and it will print on this label whatever the address block is that you created over here in the first cell. Let's go ahead and run the merge and see if it works. So go to finish and merge and choose edit individual documents and click on OK. You've got your salutation, first name, last name, company. You have the first line of the address and you have the second line of the address, city, state, and zip code. And from here, you just print the uh, sheet out on your labels and you're done. Let me show you a more flexible way of creating labels where you have total control. We're going to close this document. Okay. We're going to close Word. And we're going to start all over again, but we're not going to go into the list. We've already created the list. Let's just go back into Microsoft Word. Okay. Again, go to Mailings. We're going to go create the template. So go here, then go down to Labels. 5160. Great. There's our grid lines, and we can see everything is there. Okay, next we're going to go choose the list, the spreadsheet. We've got to go to the desktop. My list, there you go. Click on OK. I'm moving kind of fast. Okay, again, everything looks normal, right? We've got next record, next record, next record. Here's the difference. Before, we went to address block, if you recall, and we went through this step and we created the address block based on this little template over here and we fixed all the fields that Microsoft Word could not match up. We're not going to do that this time. This time, we're going to insert the fields manually. So if we go up here to insert merge field, we need the salutation, press the space bar because you need a space after the salutation. Go up here, first name. Again, you need a space. Okay. Last name. Excellent. Okay. Company. Good. Next line. I'm going to insert the address one. And what I want to do this time is I want to put the address to the second line of the address. I want to tack it on to the end of the first line of the address if it exists, because obviously, if it doesn't exist, it's not gonna print. You're not gonna get anything. You, it'll just be blank. I wanna put address two right after address one. Okay, we're gonna do something special with it, and I'll show you how to, to, to make that work right. Okay, so there's address two. Go down to the next line. We're gonna go ahead and put in the city. Now you'll notice that we're kinda 
chopping off the bit there. So we're going to fix that. Go back up, put the state, and of course the zip code. All right. If you recall before, we did fix the spacing. At least I need to fix it on mine. You may not need to on yours. So on mine, I'm going to go ahead and do Control A. I'm going to right click, go down to Paragraph. I'm going to zero out the spacing section here. Choose single from the list and click on OK and it tightens everything up a little bit. What I like to do here is I'd like to run this merge the way it is and show you a problem that we have. I'm not going to update the labels yet. I'm just going to run it. We're just going to get a single label. So let's go ahead and edit individual documents. OK, take a look here and notice that the address line, notice that the second line of the address is butt up against the first line of the address. And what I would really like it to look like is this. I want it to look like this, a comma and a space. OK, so let's go ahead and close this document and let's see what we can do here. All right, so if I go over here after address one, and I click in there, right, and I put a comma and then a space. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do merge. Okay, that's looking good. However, here is a problem. We have some addresses that don't have second lines for their address. They just have one line. So how do you do this and not make that comma show up for those labels that only have one line to their address? Well, here's how you do it. It's actually kind of cool. I got rid of the comma and I got rid of the space. And so we're back to both the address one and address two being, being right up against each other. If you go here and you right click on ADD2, go down to edit field, you can actually do something quite slick, and that is to tell Microsoft Word to insert text before the uh, ADD2 field. So here I want to put a comma, and then I also need to put a space. Okay, so now if there's something in the ADD2 field, we're going to get a comma, space, and then whatever is in that field. It's actually kind of slick. So I do OK. Let's just run the merge again. Check it out. Perfect. You see now, you see the comma in the space. But will it work for the entire merge? If you recall, in order to make those labels show up on these other labels, you must click on the Update Labels button. This is off often a step that is skipped and people are like, what's going on here? My labels aren't printing. I'm only getting one label or whatever. Well, that's because you didn't click on the update labels. So let's do it. Click on update labels. And now whatever you have in this cell gets thrown into each of the other cells in the template. Now let's run it and see what it looks like. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That's beautiful. Up here, you'll notice, again, we've got the comma, space, and suite one. Well, what about addresses that only have one line to their address? We'll take a look at these guys down here. Mr. Wayne Pencil. He uh, only has one line to his address. So, and you don't get the comma and the space. So this is just kind of showing you two different ways that you can approach creating labels. If you want just something dirty and quick, then go ahead and do the address block method. If you want full control over what your labels look like, you drop the mail merges, the mail merge fields into the document uh, individually. And that's kind of cool because what that allows you to do is it allows you, one, to customize. For example, you might want the company name to be italics. You might want the name to be bold. Now you can't do that when you're using the address block. The address block just puts in something general, generic. There it is. This is it. This is what you get. But, you know, hey, if that's what you want, excellent. Or you can go the full customized route and you're all set to go. All right, well, I hope this helped. And if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, definitely I'll leave them below. Thank you so much.